we're going to jump right back into Michael Jordan's Last Dance documentary because last night we were lucky enough to see the first two episodes and honestly really got a chance to witness the competitiveness we saw from Michael Jordan. Really, he had throughout his career and his life. So, Shannon, I need you to be honest here. Is there anything you saw last night that made you believe and change your mind that Michael Jordan is really the GOAT over LeBron? Absolutely not. Not one thing. Because I remember all those games. I remember the shot at North Carolina. Remember I said I was the one that told people. People had, Skip Bayless had people believing that the man hit a walk-off shot. And I said, no, he did not hit a walk-off shot. There was 15 seconds, and Freddie Brown turned the ball over to James Worthy because the guy flashed, and uh, James Worthy overplayed him, and he thought that was his guy, and he passed the ball. So there was still 15 seconds. I, that was me. They did that, Skip Bayless. You think you're slick. You tried to pass it off. Oh, he hit the last second shot and time ran off the clock. No, it did not. I remember the 63 points. I remember the, 40, the 49 points in game one. Skip, and I see why Steve Kerr, people don't know this, but Steve Kerr was on the Cavaliers team that Michael Jordan dropped 69 on and, not, and kept knocking them out of the playoffs year after year, wasn't he, Skip? That's why Steve Kerr, not only did he bust his head, he played with him, and then he swung on him. But that's neither here nor there. What I saw last night, what I didn't know, Skip, was the aura. Is that the, what, the way when he traveled and the, the, the rock star treatment that this team, yeah, Skip, everybody was there to see Mike. We know that. Kind of like the Jackson 5, everybody knew they were there to see Mike. We knew. It's, it's funny, Michael Jackson, Michael Jordan, that's something about these mics that just takes off. But Skip, you only saw a handful of games. And in order for someone to do a documentary about you, you had to be great at some point in time at something. Be it an artist, be it a football player, basketball player, it doesn't matter. I, I'm Netflix out on documentaries because that's, how, that's all I've been watching. So you were great. Let me take that back. You might have been great or infamous, but at some point in time, Skip, there was cachet around you in order for them to do a documentary. I got an opportunity to see behind the curtains. I got an opportunity to, get, to see and to hear firsthand the vitriol, the hatred, the blatant dislike, and the open and blatant disrespect that they showed toward Jerry Krause and how Jerry Reinsdorf, J Reinsdorf played a central role in breaking this up. And here we are getting 100% of the blame to Jerry Krause. Nah, bro, you get 50% of this. You actually, I'm giving you 75 because you own the team. You could have put a stop to this because he wanted to move. He wanted to move on with Phil Jackson after the 97 season. But what'd you do? Hop a plane, go out to Montana, give him a one-year deal, just like you could have gave him a three-year deal and said, or two-year deal and says, okay, guys, if you win this one, you're coming back. If you don't, we're breaking it up, Phil. Hey, you're gone because I already know we're going to start breaking it up and you're gone. So that didn't happen, Skip. It was just the aura. Nothing has changed about the play. This was not about, see, for me, the first part, Skip, I got more about the, 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 the surrounding, the peripheral. Skip, I already knew about the, I already knew they won the championship that year. I already knew how great of a player that he was. So nothing has changed for me. Now, I don't, I don't believe, Skip, I feel very comfortable in saying that there will be another, a ne never another basketball player that has this kind of aura around him. Skip, it's, it's, I can't explain it. And I'm, I'm normally good at words. I'm normally good at telling stories, Skip. I pride myself on being able to tell a story. But unless you've been around Michael Jordan and to see how this man levitates, it's nothing, it's nothing like it. And I don't believe we'll ever see it again. Like I said, we're never going to see another Tiger. We're never going to see another Ali. And we're never going to see a Jordan in that aspect. I do not believe your conclusion. I believe that Shannon Sharp watched last night and at some point, maybe several points, Shannon Sharp sat back and shook his head and said, Lord have mercy. LeBron can't compete with that, that, that. I think you looked at just the sheer athleticism. We've never seen anything like the way this man carried oh. himself, maneuvered on the basketball floor. I've never seen mm -hmm. anything like it. 
I told you through 97, 98, I watched every game and every night I'd say, man, I've never seen that before. He was the whole offense. He was the guy they kicked it to with the shot clock at 5-4-3-2, as they called him the ultimate bailout guy. And Shannon, he turned himself into the greatest mid-range jump shooter in the history of the game. That's why he won 10 scoring titles to LeBron's one. And yet, if you saw him play defense in spurts last night, you saw a man who made nine first-team all-defensive team. Nine. LeBron's made six, but nine to six. And he didn't play nearly as many years as LeBron continues to play. This man, Michael Jordan, led the league in steals three times. Obviously, LeBron has never done that. And need I remind everybody, he got to the finals six times, and he owned the finals all six times with six finals MVPs. And then, Shannon, what, what gets me, and I believe really gets LeBron, sticks in his craw, is if, if you're talking about GOAT, you, you can't even qualify LeBron for the discussion because he suffered so many meltdowns that Jordan never would have suffered. There's no way Jordan would have come apart the way LeBron did in his last go around his first stop in Cleveland when his owner accused him of quitting as he melted down in games four, five, and six against the Celtics and bowed out ingloriously his first time around in Cleveland and got his jersey burned. That never happened to Michael because it couldn't happen. As much as Kraus and Reinsdorf resented Michael in their wildest dreams or nightmares, that they would never accuse him of quitting. And then there's no way Michael would have come apart and melted down the way LeBron did in his first finals with the Heat after they were up two games to one. And then obviously from that point, four, five, and six, he just shrank. Michael never did that. Michael never shrank down the stretch of a pivotal game six in a 2013 finals the way LeBron did. He had two turnovers in the last 30 seconds of that game. He missed the tying three, LeBricked it, and you know the rest of the story. Ray Allen oh, saved his legacy. And there, there's no way that, that Michael Jordan would have been on a team that got blown out of the finals the way LeBron's team did in 2014 by a record finals margin. That just wouldn't have happened to Michael Jordan. And then there's no way if you had handed Michael Jordan a two games to one lead with game four in his house against the first incarnation of Golden State, that, that he would have spit that bit. He, there's no way he would have let that happen. And again, we know what happened. Golden State put Iguodala in the starting lineup and he guarded LeBron. LeBron ran out of gas, quote unquote, and they lost games four, five, and six. It, it seems like there's a theme here that LeBron kept melting down in games four, five, and six. And then dare I even bring up that game one, a couple of years, a couple of finals back at Golden State. They had him. We're going to talk in a few minutes about the last shot that Jordan made in his career, game six at Utah. Well, LeBron had him. He, he had them with the ball in his hands. Stop, stop it. With Steph, Steph was switched on to him, and they're down one just the way Jordan was. And LeBron passed up the last jump shot. Just that, that was Michael's shot. Michael made that shot. And, and obviously, if we go all the way back to the college shot, listen, Dean Smith, as much as he shackled Michael Jordan, as much as he held him down because of the, the all-for-one offense that he taught and mandated, he told Michael in the huddle of that championship game when Michael was a true freshman, if you have the shot, take it, because he could already see this kid's got it all. He, he's probably the most right. likely to make that shot, even though they called the play for James Worthy, big game James. But the ball got swung mm -hmm. back to Jordan, and he did not hesitate. And as he said, nobody on Georgetown had a clue I was going to take and make that shot. And he made it because he's Jordan. So in the big picture, I've never thought this, this GOAT debate was even, it was almost blasphemous to even invoke if the not. name of LeBron and put it in the same sentence with Michael Jeffrey Jordan. And I'm just glad that last night settled that debate. It's over.
No, it did. No, 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 it's not. Hold on. Wait, wait a minute. No, it's not. And I need you to stop telling me what I thought and what I think. I do not think this was about play. This is not about aura. Skip, I'll give you a prime example. Let's just say these two guys and, 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 and both of these guys are deceased. Michael Jackson and Prince. Now, I do not believe Prince has the aura of Michael Jackson. But Prince is more talented. He can play more instruments. He can write more songs. So, for me, you can, can, can I not make the case that Prince is the GOAT? Sure I could. But you, you want to take it about, oh, one shot. But when Jordan didn't take the last shot against uh, the, the Phoenix Suns, I think it was Phoenix, and Steve Kerr hit that shot, nobody said a word. But that's what you have teammates for. He said there could be no Michael without Scotty. Okay, if that's the case, why didn't Michael get to the NBA Finals? Without Scottie Pippen, why couldn't he get past the first round without Pippen? He's the GOAT. Why couldn't he beat the big three Celtics in their prime? He's the GOAT because you're asking LeBron, if LeBron is the GOAT, he should beat the Warriors with KD. Why couldn't uh, Jordan beat the big three Celtics? Why couldn't he get the bad boy Pistons until, he start, until they started breaking up and they started falling apart? Why, Skip? If he's the GOAT, like you said, you said Michael Jordan is the GOAT. Why couldn't he get out of the first round without Pip?